Oh, you know the first Pokemon ever designed was a Rhydon? Psh, that means nothing. You know that the Swords of Justice are based off the Three Musketeers? <laughs> Pathetic. Oh, you can name the entire Pokedex backwards without missing a single Mon? That's, 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 that's really impressive, actually. Today, we're gonna take a look at some obscure Pokemon facts that Blue Boy Finn is sure that we don't know. So we get to test our knowledge. How much of this do we actually know and how much of it do we not know? There are 14 facts in this video. So let's see what our score is. When the player has completely filled the National Pokedex in Heart Gold Soul Silver, during Professor Oak's congratulations speech, there is a typo in this sentence. A typo in this sentence? Meeting you is something I will cherish all my life long. The typo, the typo, the typo, the typo. Hold on. Wait, do, I, I see it. Do you see it? Do you see it? I'm going to give you a little bit of time. It's the... I, or actually, it's an L. Look at that, you see how it has a little pixel off to the left there? That means it's an L. And I'll give you three seconds to spot the error. I didn't even need three Did seconds. Oh, the I typo three here seconds. is that the I is actually a lowercase L. Yes! Not taking the L today, boys. Not taking it, that's one point Which I on the board. Which I think is freaking hilarious. All right, just gotta put that on the board there. You got a little one point there, all right? Looking good. When you're playing through the beginning of Pokemon Emerald, in order to progress further in the game, you have to go beat the first gym and save Pico the Wingle. Yep. But on your way back down south- Wait, I haven't seen this video, I swear. I'm gonna make a prediction. Are they going to say that if you somehow avoid speaking to May in Rossboro by like blacking out and being teleported back to Petalburg, that she will appear in Briny's house? Because I had that experience when I was streaming once. Never seen this before. Explain that real quick. So if you heal in Petalburg and then go on and defeat the first gym, spawns here because you have to do this conversation. I remember it very vividly. If that's this point, I'm going to pop off, dude. Out, there's Please. a forced encounter with May where she gives you an option to battle. Yeah. But what if on the way back from saving Pico, yes. you black out in a wild encounter? Yes, please well, say Well, you'd it. wake up in the Rustboro Poke Center, of course. Unless, unless. But what if you never used the Rustboro Poke Center? And you go back to Petalburg? What if you charged right through the first gym and the stupid Wismer Cave, but then you white out to a random Pokemon battle oh my God, and wake happening. up back in Petalburg? Bypassing yes. May completely. Well, they actually thought of this, and there's a secondary encounter you get with May in front of Mr. Briny's house if you end up in this position. Yes! Oh my god! I swear I did not pre-watch this video. No one's gonna believe me. I literally made a TikTok and a YouTube short of this before I got like a ton of views, so maybe you've seen that actually. I remember this happening. Maybe you were in the stream, but I swear that happened to me, and I was like, oh my god, I'm just learning this for the first time, and now I've kept that memory with me. Shock one up for Pat, boys. We got another one. Let's go. I'm so excited about that. Got in two Generation points. 2, when you first encounter the boy who lost his far-fetched in Elix Forest, his sprite is very clearly green colored. Okay. But when he receives his far fetched and comes back to his house, his sprite for some reason changes to blue. Uh, I just he just changed his shirt. I actually didn't know that. I thought I thought maybe if anything, it might just be another guy. In one of my past Okay, I didn't know that one. Alright, that's my first L. Fine. Last fact videos, I mentioned the game Pokemon Ranch for the Wii, which was a digital only Wii game. Well, calling it a game is a bit of a stretch. It was basically an older version of Pokemon Home. Its main purpose was transferring your Pokemon from Diamond and Pearl to a main hub. Well, when researching more about this game, I discovered some events that I found to be incredibly interesting. You see, by transferring the correct Pokemon into the ranch, you could activate specific events. You can activate specific events, like if you transfer a mill tank into the ranch, you can activate the milking mini game. You can even do it with male Tauroses as, as well. By transferring every single unknown, you could activate an event that would turn all the unknown into a giant keyboard. I By see a shiny. By transferring 40 horse Pokemon like Rapidash, Raffarig, or Ponyta, 40? you could activate a giant carousel. And by depositing 10 Illumzy or Volbeat. You say Illumzy? Yes! Finally! Someone else in the world that constantly pronounces this thing's name wrong. Elumiz, Illumi, uh, Elumizy, Elum. Illumize. 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 
Ilum Ilumise? Really? You could make them all slow dance. And one of the coolest ones I saw is by transferring Bulbasaur, Pikachu, Meowth, Teddy Ursa, Munchlax, and Torchic all at- What? What? <laughs> wait, 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 wait. What is the common thread here? <laughs> Bulbasaur? <laughs> what? Once, the main characters of the DS game, Pokemon Dash, oh, they would also- that's the common thread. Right, no, of course. ...start to race against each other, just like in Pokemon Dash. Oh, that's so cute. there's actually a lot more of these- And I saw, though, there's a shiny- there's a shiny Waylord in the background as well. Look at him. Look at him, boy. He's a shiny Waylord. That's so cute. Fence. But so far, these are the only ones on the internet that I could find footage of, courtesy of this channel. Yo, shout out to that channel. How you getting in the Pokemon footage? Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald in the summary screen for the move Nature Power, it reads that it has 95% accuracy. I didn't know that. Wait, it does? I always thought it, it just said 100. But... It doesn't. You see, nature power mm, pulls a random lying. move depending on what location you are in, such as stun spore and regular grass or hydro pump when you're underwater. Right, so it would take the accuracy from the actual move that it's using and not from the nature power. I'm not going to give that a point for myself because I actually didn't know the nature power was going to have 95% accuracy, but that's interesting. And the move actually calculates its accuracy based on the accuracy of whatever move it pulls. So this 95 number means absolutely nothing. So why is it there? I have absolutely, it just seems like a bit of a developer oversight. What would be cool and a little bit of a benefit for nature power is if it did take the 95 accuracy from that and just use that when he's like stun spore and hydro pump gave it more of a chance to hit, which would make it more usable and viable. That would be really cool. Archaeops Pokedex number is 576. Oh no, 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 they're gonna say, oh wait, I've heard of this before, but I can't remember exactly what it was. Oh, what was the thing? Why was it? Damn it, I can't remember it. I'm gonna have to take the L on this. Archaeops base stat total is 576. Oh, uh, yeah, okay. That's, it. That's the fact. That's it. God damn it. I, I've literally heard this before. I can't believe I forgot that. On November 16th, 2001, the New York Pokemon Center opened. An absolute Pokemon hub. There was endless plushies and collectibles, custom statues, and even special event Pokemon distributed regularly. But sadly, it didn't last long. On January 2005, the store closed for remodeling and opened again as Nintendo World, where it's- Okay, well, to be fair, four years of a shop being open, is, that's like a pretty decent amount of time. Still stands today. While almost every single thing was changed and redone to fit the theme of Nintendo, there is one bit of architecture left that stood the test of time since its opening over 20 years ago. Okay, I'm gonna make a guess, and if I get it right, I'm gonna give myself the point for this. Is it a statue of a Pokemon? And that is the Pokemon door handles on- Ah, oh, so close! It's not a statue! I, I can't give myself that. Damn it, I was close! Though. The entrance to the building. In Man. Generation 2, if a Pokemon is asleep or frozen, it cannot flinch. Huh? Obviously. What? It can't move. Sure? Obviously, because that would make no sense. But speaking of no sense, there actually is one thing that can cause a sleeping or frozen Pokemon to flinch, and that is the King's Rock. Why? That is if you look so at weird and specific. That Again, I think that's just a, like a developer oversight. I can't imagine why they would program it in such a way that it does that on purpose. It's just weird. This Pokemon. Charizard Kanto! Kanto! I know, you've looked at it enough. Could you tell me which types it would be weak to? Yeah, I mean, it would be weak to rock, water, ro electric. Rock, water, and electric. If you said rock, water, and electric, I did say that. Am I right? You'd be right. Yes. Almost. What? Almost. You see, there was a time where Charizard was actually weak to one other type. Charizard was weak to one other type. Wait, 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 wait. wait. Is, no... <gasps> is it ice type? Is In it ice type? In all Pokemon games now, fire is resistant to ice which makes perfect sense. But in generation one, ice was actually neutral against fire. Yes! Meaning that in generation one only, Charizard- I dropped my pen, I don't know where it is. I found it, mark it up on the board. That's a point for me, I'm taking was that. also weak to ice type. We got if that. If you're new to the channel, you might not be aware of this yet, but there's a few strange obscure licensed Pokemon games I really like to make fun of from time to time. Those games, of course, being Pokemon Team Turbo and what? Pokemon Masters Arena. The hell is that? Which are two incredibly atrocious Pokemon PC games. Oh. That's pure existence warrants a thousand questions in itself. But if you're thinking it might be low-hanging fruit to pick on these games, I mean, it's a DVD game in the dollar bin at Target. I get it. But I'd like to introduce you to... <laughs> 
no! What did they do to Groudo? Why does he look like that? He's in his power stance. Oh God! Look how they massacred my boy! Look what they did to my boy! And speaking of which, if you're sad that they did that to Groudon too, make sure that you subscribe to the YouTube channel. And also, make sure you subscribe to the original Creators YouTube channel as well. It'll be linked in the description. First link down there in the description. Show some support from our channel as well because they make fantastic videos and they definitely deserve it. The nail in the coffin. Now, I'm no programmer. You could write off everything I've said so far about these games as just me being ignorant to game design because I don't know the first thing about making a game. No, you're but right. But this next thing is inexcusable. Okay. These guys had the absolute nerve to misspell Rayquaza. Rayquaza? No, no, that's right. I mean, there's different ways of saying Rayquaza. You can say Rayquaza, Rayquaza, or you can say the correct way, Rayquaza. This is a licensed Pokemon game. It's a that typo. That has a misspelled Pokemon in it. It's a, it's a typo. Am I crazy? Okay, it's a typo. Next fact. Actually, nah, it's fine. Hold on. I'm not over this. My okay. eyes aren't broken. You're saying this too, right? That is Rayquaza misspelled in the game. But that's how they always pronounce it. Rayquaza! I mean, I get it. Rayquaza's hard to spell. But the program is just free-handed it? No Google spell track? You're just gonna go with your gut on this one? John? Really? Of all the words to trust your gut on, you choose Rayquaza. Now, I swear that's like the actual official anime pronunciation though, isn't it? Rayquaza? I, that is just insane to me. No one spells Rayquaza right the first time but no one just freaking sends it either. This game has literally no other content besides the fact that Pokemon are in it. Value soft. He's they really literally nailing paid the, you to the type the here. word Rayquaza. That's it. I literally can't believe what I'm seeing. Okay, let's move on from this. Damn, you in Pokemon really Heart Gold and Soul that. Silver on Route 43, slightly south of the Lake of Rage, there's a small pond that when surfed on contains only Magikarp. But these Magikarp are quite intriguing. Hmm, what is it about them? Do they have max IVs? They don't have a higher shiny chance, maybe... I'm just gonna say they may have better stats. There's a 99% chance that the Magikarp you encounter will be between the levels of 5 and 25. Okay. But for some reason... Is there a level 100? There's a level 100. I can't give myself a point for this. There's a 1% spawn rate 50. for a level 50 Magikarp Damn it. to appear. Close. And for some perspective, your Pokemon at this point are barely past level 30, if that. So why is this random 1% Magikarp 20 levels higher? Because he's a Sigma male on his grind set, bro. He wakes up and he goes to the gym, not like these other Magikarps that are lazy sleeping in till like 10 a.m. in the morning. This is a Sigma grind set Magikarp. He's on the grind. He's getting the levels. He's getting the other Magikarp ladies, I guess. Also in HeartGold Silver, there's a place you've probably been to called the Pokeathlon. Love which that holds place. many games for you to play and try and reach the highest scores you can. So Upon good. completing and getting very high scores on every single challenge, earning the right amount of trophies and unlocking every single thing you can, the final thing you unlock will be this room called the Friendship Room, where you actually get to see the something statue. very unique. By clicking on this statue, you get to see an alternate sprite art of your protagonist. You wow, that's actually really cool. I wish... <laughs> I wish you could have like an overworld sprite like that. That'd be sick. If you could run around in the overworld using these clothes after you'd beaten the Pokathlon as like a bonus, that'd be really cool. Just like it would be really cool if you could keep the Team Rocket outfit after you had done that event and change between the different outfits. I think that would have been a really nice addition to our Gold Soul Silver, but those games are good enough already, I suppose. Either Ethan or Lyra in a Pokeathlon uniform. And the sprite is absolutely nowhere else in the entire game besides locked away in this small room. I've wanted to include a fact about the Sinjo ruins in Heart Gold Soul Silver for a very long time. Unfortunately, nothing happens there and it's very boring and cringe. And now thanks to Silver Explorer and my Discord, I finally have a cool fact to show you guys. Never mind. If you've never heard of the Sinjo ruins, it's a special event location in the ruins of Alf. If you bring a legitimate event Arceus here, it will initiate an event where tons of crazy images flash on the screen, and then Arceus creates and hatches an egg of either Dialga, Palkia, or Giratina. That's this really is cool. This also, to my knowledge, the only time the real world has ever been shown in a main series Pokemon game, which is just pretty interesting by itself. But if you talk to your Arceus in the overworld in this room only, you get a hidden line of text that says oh. Arceus looked up and shouted at the sky, what which I think is an incredible what did he little detail. That's it? He just shouts? Calm down, mate. Come on, people are trying to sleep around here. You've just given birth to an egg.
Baby needs sleep. Have you ever wondered what the world's rarest shiny Pokemon is? Yes, it's definitely a shiny Sinistee. Sure, a shiny in itself is rare, but every Pokemon has been found shiny hundreds, maybe thousands of times over by people around the world. I a did that a couple of times. shiny is awesome, but none of them are substantially unique. You may remember the shiny Talo I mentioned in my first fact video. Others, most likely a Pokemon out there that was distributed during an event for a very short period of time that came with a special event only move, and that happened to be randomly shiny for a lucky person. Oh, that would be really cool actually if it had like a shiny chance because usually events are shiny locked so you can't shiny hunt an event but I guess back in the day if you got like an egg or something along those lines you'd have a chance for it to be shiny. That'd be really cool. Making it unbelievably rare if not an entirely unique shiny Pokemon. Unfortunately, it does suck. And although the existence of that is very possible, even 99% likely, it's still not something that I can prove exists or that we will likely ever find. The unfortunate truth about this is when the events were going on, people, if someone were to find a shiny, it's probably like a five year old that's on a roller coaster or something like that. And they'd probably end up resetting their game at some point or selling it on and having someone not look at it and then reset it so they can make their own playthrough. So if there ever was one, it's probably gone now. There's not even a photo of one out there on the internet. And events where Pokemon had random chances to be shiny are remnants of an era from long ago. Something we haven't seen in over 10 years to my knowledge. So but today, it's likely that I would not like exist. to propose a new contender for the oh. world's rarest shiny Pokemon. Oh. Even though oh. shiny hunting is probably the mechanic in the game that is most loved by the community, it's interesting to notice the Pokemon company's approach to them. It's almost like they avoid acknowledging their existence. I mean, Ash had a shiny knockdown for how many seasons, and they only acknowledged it once. It took seven generations for them to give a trainer that actually had a shiny, and they had one. One in the game! And then they had like one anime episode where someone's like a shiny hunter, and that's it. Some, I, I, I listen, I love shinies. I love, I think they're great. If you think they're great, hit that like button. There's hardly any physical official shiny Pokemon merchandise out there. Which is, Which weird. is weird, isn't it? God, we were like, we were like mind links right there. Yeah, it is weird because people absolutely adore, uh, adore them. So even if Game Freak's like, oh, I don't like shinies, like money, Mr. Krabs, arr, 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 money, 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 money. Like, where is the money? Plushes and figures exist for every single Pokemon. And while there are a few shiny items made, it seems they're for some reason largely left out of this side of the Pokemon world. But I wish they would just randomly make shinies and send them out. Like there was a one in 4,000 chance that your plush when it's sent out will be a shiny one. Though I guess that could be said it would be false advertisement. You'd have to see ahead of time that there's a chance that this could happen. But I think that'd be so cool. Imagine getting a shiny plush after an order from the Pokemon Center. That would double their sales from weirdos like me who would like to shiny hunt plushies. But officially made relics of shiny Pokemon do actually exist. And I oh. took some time to research and found the two most interesting examples. What I'm about to show you is what I believe to be the first official shiny Pokemon merchandise ever made. In Go the year on. 2000, Hasbro and the Pokemon Company teamed up to release a series of toys called Pokemon Combat Figures. A collection of about 30 Pokemon with little built-in attacks. Is it knocked out? What's really interesting about this is that some of these figures had a shining figure counterpart, which consisted what? of 10 Pokemon. Pikachu, Cyndaquil, Chikorita, Charizard, Blastoise, Scyther, Heracross, Tyrogue, Zapdos, and Spinarak. According Sp to Bulbapedia, these figures were first made available around 2003, but other sources say closer to 2001. Sadly, there's very little information out there about them, but according to my research, I could not find a single piece of official shiny Pokemon merchandise older than this making this the very first shiny merchandise ever created. I wonder how much it would be to buy one of those now. And can I? Do you have one? Can I buy one off but you? the next thing I want to talk about is far more interesting. Even more interesting. A company called Jack Specific Ooh, I'm, I'm worked ready. with Pokemon to create a toy called the Pokemon Battle Dome playset that let you customize and create battles with a bunch of Pokemon figures. That looks really cool. The set cool. released somewhat alongside Diamond and Pearl, but what's interesting is not the playset itself, but rather the promotional material. You see, the original prototype design of this toy showcased in promotions was completely different and far weirder. 
there were rocks that looked like weird geodude bodies three pikachu figures it's a, it's a dead it's straight up just a dead geodude like pikachu just straight up ripped its arms off and is like ah, pika pee like i just did murder and most notably a shiny kingdra figure oh looking at this picture okay. there are so many questions why are two of these Pikachus the same? Why are there weird Geodude rocks? Why is there a Mudkip and a Bonsly? And why is half of Kingdra red? Well, with the little information we have... I would just say that it's just like a mock-up that you use to kind of prototype the designs of things that ends up getting changed later. Like, when you prototype a video game, obviously everything gets changed and you can never really rely on really early gameplay footage to be representative of what the final product's actually going to be. We can probably deduce that this was very early in development oh, and was yeah. nothing more than a concept design. Oh my god, I'm putting that on the board. Yup, that's four points for me. Got nailed regardless, it. Regardless, the truth is that this shiny Kingdra figure that is somewhere out there is entirely one of a kind. It might Ooh. be possible that a few of these were made and never distributed, but this is the only picture of this figure that exists on the entire internet. They probably would have been destroyed by now though. And if there is more than this one figure, I would bet you all my shiny Pokemon that you could count the amount of Kingdra figures like this one on a single hand. And although this toy and this set has fallen entirely into obscurity, somewhere out there Six in a box results. or an old storage unit or laying in a landfill lies the rarest shiny Pokemon on the entire planet. All right, boys, we gotta go find it. We gotta go find it. The first thing we need to do is make sure we're subscribed to both channels. Like I said, link is down there in the description. The only way to find it is to spread this video around. Make sure that you like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys did enjoy it. I have a second channel linked in the description where I do more reactions that you might enjoy. I hope you did enjoy this one. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.